Hello Engine 1060. In this video, I will cover how to create functions with multiple outputs. Recall that to create a function, you must first start a new M file and declare it as a function with a function header. As an example, we have the word function followed by Taylor result, which is our output then sign Taylor, which is our function name. And then we have X and N, which are our two inputs. In this video, I will focus on how we can create multiple outputs. Remember that you cannot click run on a function file. Clicking run on a function file does not work because no inputs have been provided to it. Instead, you must call a function using a separate or complementary M file. So the function on the left here is our function file. And the file on the right is our M file, which calls the sign Taylor function. So in this multiple output example, we will be looking at the bagger 293, which consists of rotating buckets that dig material from the earth and moves it along a conveyor belt. This machine here is the bagger 293 and is located in Germany. It is a fairly big structure, 96 meters tall and 225 meters long. It's operated by five people at a time and it can move 240,000 cubic meters of earth per day. So you work for a mining company that uses the bagger 293 and the company wants to know the risks posed to the workers if debris were to fall from the conveyor belt. The height of the conveyor belt changes day to day and therefore the risk will change day to day. Your programming task is to code a function that calculates the time taken for the debris to hit the ground and the velocity at when it hits the ground. Also note that your function must work with vector inputs. So the first step is always to describe the problem using mathematics. We have two equations, one for the falling time and the other for the velocity at which the object hits the ground. So T is the falling time, H is the height of the conveyor belt, G is the acceleration due to gravity, and V is the velocity of the debris as it hits the ground. The next step is then to determine which variables are the input arguments and which variables are the output arguments. V is the falling velocity, and since this is what we're after, it should be an output. T is the falling time, which again is what we're interested in. So this is also an output. H is the height of the conveyor belt, which we can set. So therefore it is an input. And G, which is neither an input or an output. Since for our applications, we expect the gravity not to change, we can treat it as a constant defined within the function file itself. The third step then is to create the MATLAB function. We can do so by starting off with the function header. Recall that the function header starts off with the word function. Since we have two outputs, we need to encase it in square brackets to denote that it is a vector. My first output is drop time, and my second output is drop velocity. Next, we have our function name, which is debris drop. And finally, we have our input, which is conveyor height. Continuing on, we can fill out the documentation for our function 
given by the syntax, the author, the description, and the input and output arguments. Remember that the aim of a function is always to calculate its outputs. Since we have two outputs, we should expect at least two lines to calculate the outputs. One being the drop time on line 19, and the other would be drop velocity on line 20. We have an additional line here on line 18, which specifies the value for gravity. We need to define the value of gravity in the function itself because we actually use it for the calculation of drop time. So we're posed with the following questions now that we have created our function file. One, calculate the fall time and velocity of debris with a conveyor height of 50 meters. Secondly, repeat question one for several conveyor heights of 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 90 meters. And third, what happens if the following command is executed? x equals debris drop b. So for the first question, we can calculate the fall time and velocity of the debris with a conveyor height of 50 meters. Remember that we always must have a separate m file to call our function file. Here is my m file which I've created a variable called blah with the value of 50. This is representative of the conveyor height. I've chosen the variable name blah specifically to illustrate that the variable name blah which goes into the function does not need to exactly match that defined within the function file which is conveyor height. I can then call my function by copying the function header declaration without the word function as shown here, ensuring that I'm putting in the correct input variable. Doing so will create my variables blah, which is 50, my drop time, which is 3.19, and my drop velocity, which is 15.66. Repeating question one for multiple values of conveyor heights can be done as follows. Here again, we have the function header declaration followed by the equations within the function file. I have my separate m file, which contains the variable blah2. This is a vector from 10 to 90 with steps of five meters. And then I've called my function by specifying the two outputs, a, b, is equal to my function name and then my input, which is blah2. Here I'm demonstrating that the output variable names does not need to match those within the function files. So in the function file, I've named it as drop time and drop velocity. However, in my m file, I've named it as a and b. So a is actually representative of drop time and B is representative of drop velocity. The following variables are created within the workspace. We have our A which is drop time, B which is drop velocity and blah2 which are our conveyor heights. Third. What happens if this command is executed? Well, we have one output, x is equal to the function name with one input. So this is my m file, where we define b with a value of 80. b is our conveyor height. And we've supplied b 
to the debris drop function as shown here. Notice that I've specified only one output. Even though our function file contains two outputs. Running this M file will produce the following workspace where we have B and X is equal to 4.03. If only one output is specified when calling a function, then only the first output of the function is provided. This means that X represents drop time. Since this is our first output in our function file. MATLAB will not calculate drop velocity since we've only specified one output when calling the debris function. It is therefore good practice to copy the entire function header without the word function when calling your functions. To summarize, in this video we have learned how to create a function with multiple outputs and how to call a function with multiple outputs. As a final thought for this video, is it possible to obtain only the second output without assigning a variable to the first output? So in using the previous example, is it possible to obtain a value for drop velocity without assigning a variable to drop time?